This is the brand new DJI Mini 5 Pro and in this video I'm going to test out everything that's changed on this drone to see if it's worth the upgrade. It is identical in terms of size, weight and dimensions. However, there are a few little upgrades here and there. One of the first things I noticed with the new Mini 5 Pro is this new propeller design where it's basically got this push, twist and lock design which we've seen on a bunch of the bigger DJI drones which in my opinion is a big upgrade over the Mini 4 Pro which has these little propellers that you screw in one at a time and it's just not as great. Now also if you look closely at the motors of both of these drones you will see that the motors on the Mini 4 Pro are actually a bit smaller than those on the Mini 5 Pro. And that's great because it means that this drone actually has better wind resistance and a higher top speed in all directions. When it comes to obstacle avoidance sensors, both drones have the same amount of sensors, except the Mini 5 Pro now has a little LiDAR sensor on the front there, which is really cool because it gives it advanced return to home. What it also means is even in pitch black darkness, these will work for obstacle avoidance and it gives you peace of mind that the drone is always going to come back on its own. Of course the biggest difference between these two drones is going to be the brand new camera on the Mini 5 Pro. Now this has finally got a 1 inch sensor with a 24mm equivalent lens which is amazing and I think it's actually the exact same camera that we find on the Air 3S which is incredible that they managed to fit it in such a small drone. It's time to test fly these drones on this beach. It's very bright, so this is gonna be a really good test to see in ideal lighting conditions how these two compare. For every comparison in this video, I'll be using identical settings on both of the drones. It is important to note I am using minus two sharpness because I believe that gives the best image from these cameras. I am also gonna shoot in D-Log M for every shot and color correct using DJI's LUT. The videos from both of these drones look really good and to be honest it's very difficult to see a difference between the two of them. You have to crop into 400% to see a difference here and you'll notice that the shadows in the Mini 4 Pro image are just a bit noisier. Both cameras have a 2x digital zoom function but with the Mini 5 Pro it uses the quad bear sensor to get a much sharper image when cropping in like this. I was a bit wary about this when I first heard about it but actually looking at the results the Mini 5 Pro's 2x zoom is actually really impressive and 100% usable. You'll see on the Mini 4 Pro comparison especially when we crop into 300% that it's very mushy and not usable on this drone in my opinion. Both of these drones can do 4K slow motion, but now the Mini 5 Pro can actually go up to 120 FPS in 4K, whereas the Mini 4 Pro was limited to 100 FPS. In practice, this isn't a massive difference, and both drones still look really good in their 4K slow motion options. In 1080p slow motion, the Mini 5 Pro can now go up to 240 FPS, whereas the Mini 4 Pro was locked at 200 FPS. But as you can see, both of the images are just pretty mushy, and I really wouldn't recommend using this mode, and I would just stick to 4K slow motion. I've come to the sea point at sunset, so it's gonna be the perfect chance to get some golden hour footage comparisons. And there's just something I forgot to mention earlier. DJI have also improved the cover system for the Mini 5 Pro. It's now this all-in-one thing where it protects the propellers and the gimbal at once, which is a lot better than what they did with the Mini 5 Pro, which is kind of this two-part system where you've got this rubber strap to hold the propellers down, and then you've got a separate gimbal cover. Something else DJI has improved is now that even with the drone off, you can still access the files from the drone and apparently the transfer speed is a lot faster now. So I've got a connection here and if I want to download the files to my phone, wow that is downloading really fast. This is a 45 second clip and it's already done downloading. And there I have the file. That's actually a really nice feature. The ND filter case for the Mini 5 Pro is about 10 times the size of the one for the Mini 4 Pro, so I'm not a big fan of that. And it also only comes with an ND8, 32 and 128, so I would really recommend getting a Freewell ND filter set for this drone if you want to take it seriously. In these golden hour shots, the videos from both of the drones look amazing, to be honest. And again, it's difficult to find a difference between the two of them. You really have to crop in a lot to see any meaningful difference. And you'll see again in this 400% crop that the Mini 4 Pro just has a bit more noise in the shadows. I tested the two times video mode on both drones in a bit lower lighting conditions, and we see the same results again. 
The Mini 4 Pro looks mushy with very low detail and the Mini 5 Pro actually looks really good. Obviously it's not going to be as high quality as something like the telephoto camera on the Air 3S, but this mode genuinely makes the Mini 5 Pro feel like it has a telephoto lens as well, which I am a really big fan of. If you zoom in closely, you'll see a bit of aliasing where there's a high amount of detail, but honestly I'm still really impressed with this mode. When it comes to native vertical shooting, of course both of these drones are going to stand out as they're able to flip the camera a full 90 degrees. However, the Mini 5 Pro has a little trick here that it's inherited from its big brother, the Mavic 4 Pro, and that's that it now has the barrel roll feature, allowing you to rotate the gimbal from 45 degrees all the way to 180 degrees. Personally for me, I don't really like this mode, but I think some people do, so if you do, that's a selling point. Well, I do appreciate that you can flip the cameras a full 90 degrees to get true vertical shooting with these drones. What I would way prefer to see is open gate recording. Now, what this means is that it'll actually record the full sensor in video mode and not just stills mode, which allows for a lot of room in post. Now, firstly, what it means is you can shift your landscape video up and down in the frame, which can be super helpful. But more importantly, it means you can take a vertical crop out of your landscape videos. So you don't have to shoot it twice. It's not gonna be as tall as flipping the camera fully 90 degrees, but it's still a whole lot better than having to shoot the scene twice in my opinion. Now there is absolutely no excuse for DJI to be leaving this feature out in their drones. They already do it in their action cameras and the air units for their FPV drones, so why not on the consumer drones? Both drones let you easily shoot panoramas automatically, which I'm a big fan of because it gives you that really expansive view of a scene. However, the Mini 5 Pro has a really cool free panorama mode now where it lets you select the corners of your panorama and then it'll stitch it together all on its own. And this is really nice because often when you just choose the wide or the vertical, it just doesn't do enough. And this will let you literally choose in camera where you want the panorama to start and end. In terms of photos, both drones do a fantastic job. However, I would say that the Mini 5 Pro just looks slightly better. I think you're gonna get a little bit better dynamic range, sharpness, and low light performance with the Mini 5 Pro. Both drones have the option to step up their megapixel count. The Mini 4 Pro can go from 12 to 48 megapixels, and the Mini 5 Pro can go from 12 to 50 megapixels. And I would say it's worth it on both of these drones. You definitely do get a sharper image, but the drone is gonna take longer to take the photo. The file size will be about four times as large and I wouldn't recommend it in dark scenarios. Now we need to talk about dynamic range because I think this is the single biggest improvement with this drone. Now, if you look at the shot from the Mini 4 Pro, it's impressive because this is a very contrasty scene and the Mini 4 Pro is doing well to balance the exposure. But if we switch to the Mini 5 Pro, this kind of just blows me away. Look how nicely it's exposing for the sun and it's retaining all the detail in those dark shadows on the rocks. The bizarre thing about this claimed 14 stops of dynamic range is that it's only active when the drone is in auto mode and not in manual exposure. It's also not available when you're in slow motion or with the two times crop on the Mini 5 Pro. But it does work in all the other resolutions and frame rates and it also allows you to shoot in D-Log M at the same time, which is great. Here's also a live demo of switching between auto and manual exposure and you can clearly see how the dynamic range just jumps up when I switch to auto mode. It's kind of bizarre, I've never seen this on a drone or a camera before. I'm busy editing my review video and I just got reminded of a small but pretty cool little upgrade they brought to the Mini 5 Pro. And that's that now when you access the files and plug it in, you don't even have to turn the drone on and you actually don't even need a battery installed in the drone. And as you can see here, there's my SD card and there's my internal storage which has actually been upgraded from a measly two gigabytes on the Mini 4 Pro to 48 gigabytes on the Mini 5 Pro, which is a nice little upgrade. And that brings me on to this video sponsor, which is Wondershare Recovery. A few years ago, one of my SD cards failed and I tried a bunch of different software and Wondershare Recover it was literally the only one that was able to recover my files. As soon as you plug the device into your computer, the software will identify it and then you just need to click scan and the software will go through that device and find all the files it can on it, including any deleted or corrupted files. To scan the 48 gigabytes of internal storage on the Mini 5 Pro, it took about four minutes, which really isn't that bad. 
then you just choose where you want it to recover the files to and it'll essentially just copy them right over. From there you've got your recovered files and it's as easy as that and they've actually got a 99.5% success rate. Because the software is free to download what I would recommend you do is download it using the link in the description below just so that if you ever do encounter this scenario you have it ready for you to see if it can recover your files. I came to the farm where we test fly our world's fastest drone to get some beauty shots of the yellow canola fields but unfortunately it's super cloudy so I'm gonna have to try my best to get great shots but other than that I'm also gonna test the active track because that's been improved on the Mini 5 Pro and we're also gonna do some drag racing with these drones to see which is actually the faster one. Both drones make shooting hyperlapses very easy and I couldn't really see any difference between these two modes on these two drones. Both of them will stitch together a final product for you, but I did notice the Mini 5 Pro did so much faster. The result straight from the drone is okay, but I do find you get a lot better of a final result if you edit the raw files yourself and put them all together manually. On paper, the Mini 5 Pro is supposed to be faster in forward and sideways and backwards flying, but in my testing, I didn't find any difference in these speeds. It could be because I was using the sub 250 gram battery and apparently the plus battery gets you more lateral speed so maybe that's the reason. But when it came to vertical climbing the Mini 5 Pro absolutely smoked the Mini 4 Pro reaching up to 9 meters a second whereas the Mini 4 Pro could only get up to 5 meters a second and you can really see the difference in this video. You might not think that's that big of a deal but when you need to get in position quickly to shoot that sunset the extra speed definitely makes a difference. And on the descent, the Mini 5 Pro was able to get down to minus 8 meters a second, whereas the Mini 4 Pro was stuck on minus 5, so that's also really nice to be able to get back and land quickly. DJI claims that the active track performance on the Mini 5 Pro has been improved across the board, so I rode around on my one wheel and flew both drones at the same time with auto active track on on each of them. And I got some really cool results, I think the drones both did this really well. But to be honest, I couldn't really notice any difference between the two of them, so if there are upgrades, it's going to be pretty minimal. When you don't have enough wind, you've got to make your own wind. DJI claims that the wind resistance has gone up from 10.7 meters per second on the Mini 4 to 12 meters per second on the Mini 5, which is actually on par with the Air 3 series, so that's really impressive. And from my testing, it did seem like the Mini 5 Pro handled especially side-on wind a bit better. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do a direct battery life comparison between the two drones because I had the plus battery for the Mini 4 and the normal battery for the Mini 5. However, DJI does claim that there are significant battery improvements across both batteries. Now, the normal battery, they say, has gone from 34 minutes on the Mini 4 to 36 minutes on the Mini 5. But with the plus battery, DJI claims they've gone from 45 minutes on the Mini 4 to 52 minutes on the Mini 5, which is a huge upgrade. And that's actually the highest rated battery life of any DJI consumer drone. The Mavic 4 Pro, I believe, is rated at 51 minutes. However, in saying that, I would say a realistic flight time you can expect from these drones is maybe just over 30 minutes of flying around with the Plus battery and just over 20 minutes of flying around with the normal battery on the Mini 5 Pro. When it comes to the noise level of the two drones, I was surprised to see that the Mini 5 Pro is just slightly quieter and I think it's got a bit more of a pleasing sound to it. What I will say is that these are the most quiet and least obtrusive drones that DJI makes. So the topic of bit rates is going to be a bit of a disappointing one for quite a lot of people because they've actually gone down across the board. For the 24, 25 and 30 FPS options, the Mini 4 Pro would record around 90 megabits a second, but the Mini 5 Pro now records at about 75 megabits a second, so that's already lower. But if you step up to the 48, 50 and 60 FPS options, the Mini 4 Pro used to record at 130 megabits a second, but now the Mini 5 Pro records at around 90 megabits a second. So I think the Mini 4 Pro was recording over 40% more data at those higher frame rate options. And this is an interesting one because I'm all for having smaller file sizes and saving space on my hard drives. 
But at the same time, there's that little part of me that kind of thinks that, oh, because the bit rate is lower, this must be worse quality. But I honestly think that's a bit of a placebo thing. And I've really pushed these videos to their max in the color grading. And I honestly cannot see any difference. If somebody else is able to test it and find a difference, then I would be interested to see that. But me personally, across the board, the Mini 5 Pro looks better. So I'm not too fussed about the lower bit rates. In fact, it's actually a bit of a bonus when it comes to storage. It's very late and it's very dark, but there's a good reason I'm out. And that's because there's actually bioluminescence in the waves behind me there, which I hope you can see on camera. So I'm gonna test the low light performance of the drone now and try and get some shots of it. For these shots, I only had the Mini 5 Pro, but I did do other night comparisons with both drones. To be honest, I was very impressed with the night footage I managed to shoot with the Mini 5 Pro. I felt that it retained a lot of detail and definitely wasn't too noisy across the board. So I think this is definitely that one inch sensor showing off a bit here. Along with Mother Nature too, of course. The Mini 4 Pro does currently have a night video mode, but the Mini 5 Pro doesn't. However, if you go to normal color in the Mini 5 Pro, it lets you go up to 12,800. And these are the results I got with both of these drones. I think the Mini 4 Pro is getting some intelligent denoising here by using night mode, which the Mini 5 isn't getting. But in saying that, the Mini 5 Pro is still much, much better in this low light scenario. And as you can see in the close-ups, the Mini 4 Pro is a lot noisier and the footage just does not look as good. Of course, these results are not surprising considering the sensor on the Mini 5 is actually about 68% larger in surface area. So naturally, it's gonna have much better low light performance. I would be interested to see in the future if DJI implements a night video mode in the Mini 5 Pro, if that gets us even better night footage. In terms of pricing, I'll put all the information I have on screen now. And I will also put links to the best deals I can find on these two drones in the description below. So you can go check it out there. If you have any questions about either of these drones, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's all from me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.